hello there. So, um, I'm going to make a draft excluder and I did promise you the video of this being made. Now I do have the video, it's an hour and a half long and I really waffle and it makes no sense. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make a draft excluder but I'm literally going to use up the last of this zebra fur. Uh, I use this zebra fur for a pair of pyjamas uh, for a friend and I think this is the biggest bit left. So um, I saw it there and I've kept it separate. Sometimes I put like fabric in um, freezer bags so that if I've got leftovers then I can use them but then I don't have mess everywhere. So anyway, that's irrelevant. I'm waffling again. Um, so Zebra, let's go to the bit of paper and work out the pattern. Now there is a, a sheep pattern on my videos and there is the bunny pattern as well. So you can use either of these top bits really, depending what you have, depending what you like. Now the idea of the draft excluder is it's weighted slightly so that you can put them on top of curtains and then keep the curtains flat for when you have drafty winters. Now, I do like him. I like the flat cap. I think that's very clever. And I do like the fact that he's got tartan trousers. But I'm not buying any more fur just to make a draft excluder because I, um, <laughs> I didn't want to. <laughs> okay, so... And what I've done here is I've literally drawn the basic pattern for the head. Now I'll draw this out neater for you. I um, I didn't bother drawing the pattern, I just cut the material once I've worked out how I wanted it to be. And there's some clever things, like I knew that this is the face where it comes out, because those horses have those big cheekbones at the side. So I drawed around the top and then I drawed around there. And then I will literally sew those on so that they, they pump it out. So I've got all the patterns and it is very similar to this. I know I need a couple of feet to stick out the end. Now zebras have hoofs. Um, bunnies, I, if I was to do one for the bunny, I would uh, probably sh stop the trousers quite late because bunnies have that big kind of hind legs for jumping. The sheep is quite flat and the zebra is kind of, you know, they've got that, those big bones for jumping and fighting off gazelles and everything. So this is all going to be tartan and then this is going to be zebra fur. Okay, I put the pattern up on Facebook because um, very few people can follow my thinking. But first job is just to make the puppet, which will be the top. And then we can make the trousers and the feet. And then we can make the flat cap, because the flat cap's good. Probably, literally, if you've seen the other videos, then that's grand. If not, all I'm doing is literally sewing around the bottom of the puppet. together and the face together. Oh. I am silly. I don't know why I even tried to do a sewing machine. Lovely. I'm going to pause and I'm going to sew those bits. Hello there. So yes, um, I can't thread the needle with a camera on, I, 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 we all have failings. <laughs> so um, what I've done is I've sewn this together, which is the front and the back, and I've sewn my face together. So there we are. Now those are the side cheek pieces that I was talking about earlier. And then I'm going to need to sew that onto the body. But before I do that, I've got some eyes. I know, I'm not 100% sure, they might be frog eyes actually, but I just think they're going to look really, really good. Now, I need a picture of a horse, don't I? <laughs> or at least a zebra. So, I'm going to make a little stitch there, a snip, 
and then push the eyes through. Oh yes, yeah, so one thing I was going to say is on the, these, um, I never put a tail on because I thought that they wouldn't sit flush to the door frame or anything. Um, it just made sense to me not to do that. Um, obviously, you know, if you're making something similar but for a soft toy or something, you can, I suppose. So the way to sew this onto the body is to push it in like that so it's the right way around and we're going to use pins just to keep it in place because I don't want the machine to push it round so I'm going to place a pin at the bottom there and I'm going to place a pin at the top there but because the right side of the fabric is on the inside of the body if we put this through the right way around then it will it will match up. Now I'm going to make sure my ears are tucked in and then I'm going to join these together and I'm going to mark it with a pin and because it's quite small I'm only going to use four pins because I think anything else and I'll, I'll, I'll end up injuring myself. So there we go just pushing that in there then lining it up by eye, making sure my ear's out of the way, and then I'll put another pin in. Now, if there's any gather or anything, what I'll do is I'll gather to the pin. Have I got that the right way around? That's it. Because the ears aren't actually sewn onto the back here, I'm sewing onto the cheekbones. So now that I'm happy with it, um, I probably do it right mess for you, but a uh, right mess on the camera, I'm going to sew it. <clears throat> now the bigger you make soft toys, the easier they are to sew. I had a feeling I was going to hit the needle. There we go. But I do think small ones are very cute. So. I'm just coming up to the next pin. Gonna make sure that's pulled around. Just coming up to the next pin, and I'm going to do it nice and slowly, all tucked up under my foot, and tuck everything else under my foot. Sorry, if you put your eyes in at this before this point, is that when you're sewing, the actual eye pushes you out of the way. Lovely, that's the last bit. <laughs> and there we are. Let's cut that thread. So, fingers crossed, he should have two eyes and two ears. And two sticky out paws. There we go. Now I haven't even tried to worry about which direction the zebra stripes go. Um, 
because I, I just think I would get too concerned about that and not worry about anything else. Now, he does need stuffing, or if you wanted to, you could keep him as a glove puppet. Now, we're, um, I'm going to put some stuffing in him just so he sits upright, actually, because um, we're going to move on to the legs. Now, the legs is quite important because... <laughs> there we go, and I'm going to put some stuffing in his nose as well. well that's all I'm going to do. I think I've made him look even worse, haven't I? There we go, straighten him out a bit. Uh, the legs is the next bit we're going to do, and um, I was chucking this away. This is I'm literally taking this out of the bin, isn't it terrible? And I just need a bit of fabric to do his legs, and there really isn't a lot left. But you know, I've made use of as much as I can. Now I could, I think, find some black um, zebra fur just to do some hooves. Yeah, I think I'll do that. All right, I'll get everything set up for the next stage. And, um, yes, you won't be going anywhere. Hello there. So, I've got everything I need, honestly. <laughs> I probably haven't, so. But we've got a good place to start. So, I found some black fleece. Uh, hooves are horseshoe shaped, yeah? So, I've got triangles and I sew around the long side and then that's the hooves for the ends of the legs literally <laughs> you should have seen me going through my bin it was quite funny now I've got two squares two rectangles of zebra fur so that I can then do the long bit here now I have a rectangle for the base as well because this is Matey Boy is a triangle, and um, yeah, so I've got the base all sorted, and that's all measured up. Get rid of him before I start coughing. Now, this is folded in two, and I'll need to cut the seam, but what I wanted to do was just get the pieces cut out. So I know that the, the far ends have got to be the size of the zebra pieces that I have. That's all there is to it. They can't go any bigger, they can't go any smaller. So they've got to be that size. Lovely. Now I said before I wanted him to have big hind legs so he can jump away from gazelles. And then I want his waistband. So lovely. Because I folded this in half, I know that I have enough. I have two the same. And I need to cut the long seam so that it's it's right. Okay, so I have my bits, which is a good place to start. And I've changed the cotton in the machine to a nice red. Lovely. Now, um, I think it was this video that I said about this, um, these rolls. Now, this one is coats, which when I was a kid, coats was the best name of cotton. So that's why I have no problem with them. Although this is an unnamed generic brand and that one's slightly weaker, but not the worst. So I guess it's um, up to you. So lovely. Um, we're going to do the hooves first, aren't we? So I have one hoof and one piece of fleece and I need to sew the longest side of... I don't know, triangle? It's not a triangle, is it? Parallelogram? <laughs> I don't know, sorry, I really don't know. <laughs> I'm not even willing to go and look it up. <laughs> but this is the wall of the hoop. So let's get this going. Now I've got the horseshoe shape flat. And I'm literally 
just sewing around with this long edge. As me saying, this cotton's really good. I think it was completely from unthreaded. Let's double check. Yeah, no, it's going through there. Yeah, that's probably user operator. Lovely. It's moving now, so that's the main thing. Yeah, I'm just easing this round. There is quite a lot of stretch in it. I'm just making sure that it joins up at the end. to sew the zebra fur along the shorter side. Um, when, I'm, when I did the cutting out, I did make a mistake. I cut out for two of the long bits and I didn't include the flat base. So what I might do is just double check that and trim it. But for now, I'm going to sew the right side to the right side of the hoof on the shorter side of the back bit. Just so we've got a bit of leg flashing out from beneath his trousers, you know. No other reason. All right, away I go. And then I have the joys of trying to turn it inside out. But it's all good. This will all need turning inside out and it's got the, the leg hole here but we'll come back to that so that's one hoof done now I said that I made a mistake and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rectify that now so I need the width of my zebra stripe to cover half of the bottom And the full length of there. So if I just trim off that much from the bottom there then it'll be the right size. So this is folded over and it is going to be very difficult to get this all turned inside out but I'm sure it'll look stunning in the end. So that's that done. Let's just go through how we're going to sew this. So I have one piece of this long and I'm going to sew it to the long base here and then I'm going to sew the other side of the base to the other side of the up bit. speed on this machine. So that's that. Now I need the other leg piece to sew just along here and then that will make my triangle.
so that's that done the next job is to sew up my leg to the hip and then I need to leave a hole big enough for his waistband squash that out so that he can then be sewn onto the trousers so let's fold it in half and let's make a little mark in the cloth so that I know exactly where I'm going and then I need to fold him in half So that I've got half again. And I'm literally just cutting a tiny notch in. I can either a bit I could either have done this when I originally cut it out and done nice notches going outwards, or I could have do it now. So that's that. Or I could use a marker pen. Sometimes I do. Lovely. So literally I'm sewing the top of the two bits of fabric and I'm looking out for my marker. I'm going to give it a good couple of reverse stitches just to keep it because this is probably where there's a bit more pressure. And then I'm going to go and do the other side. basically the bottom of the draft excluder. I now have to get my hooves in here which should be easy enough. I am going to push them through and then sew around the other side. Lovely. Now I'm going to put the seam of the hoof at the bottom so that the, sorry, I'm going to put the, the half point seam at the bottom of here so that it kicks out at the top. I'm just trying to work out whether it's the right way around or not because I don't think it is. Um, I think I have to turn this. I'm going to pause you whilst I work this out. Sorry, my brain's not what it was. Hello there. So I know I wasn't keen on turning these inside out, but I think it is easier to turn them inside out now than having to turn it all inside out. So yes, of course, when you're sewing in things like this, you put the right side to the right side. Now these are my feet that are going at the end. Whilst I was um, off camera, I did sew both of them. And I need them sticking up like that. So, that, so it's a case of putting them inside the leg. Bear with me. And I would like the bottom of the seam at the bottom of here. So I'm just going to fiddle it round so I know that the bottom is at the bottom so I can actually put the sides at the sides as well. There we go, get that under the machine and then I can start sewing. Twisting it round inside as I sew. So. Ow! <laughs> I 
to stab myself with a needle. I'm such a wimp, you know. <laughs> and there we go. I'm just coming up to the last bit. And there we go. I've got all my thread caught up around the back of my foot. I do this so often, you know. So I'm going to... I've just kicked out the foot so that I can then get the foot out. I really need to go and get plaster. <coughs> no, I've got nothing in here that I can use. Okay, bear with me. <laughs> I am such a wimp, honestly. <laughs> gone quite a while so if it seems to jump then um, it's because I've forgotten where I was. I believe I have sewn in one foot and I'm just going to start sewing in the other foot. So and it is just a matter of squeezing this round. sure it all attaches. I was just checking it was actually sewing then, sorry. of stuff caught around the foot again so yes I have It's just this little bit of fabric here that I want to sew up. Which isn't too hard, is it? That's not too hard. Okay. It's because it's such a scruffy bit of material now. There's all sorts of loose bits of thread and everything. Now, I believe the next job is to sew half of the zebra in. Now I don't want to sew them all in because I want to be able to turn this all inside out um, but I do want to at least do the front tidily so um, it's not going to be an easy fit because I've stuffed him already which maybe I could unstuff him but um, I'm sure I'll be fine. So I need to put the seams of the top of the legs to the side of the body and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these legs smaller <clears throat> I like yeah this is what happens when I go and have lunch I, I come back and I'm um, it takes me just a while to warm up, so... Lovely. So what we can do is we can re-measure this so that we can get it exactly halfway and exactly halfway in. So that's grand. It just needs a sort of good inch off each side. Lovely. I 
I'm going to go until I, I rejoin the original stitches. And there we go. Because in a way, it would be better if he had um, like a beer belly hanging over his trousers than it would be if he just had it tight. So he then goes in and we're still doing right side to right side so although this is inside out we want the right side of the trousers. And if it was a problem, I would unstuff him slightly. And what I want to do is match up the seam of the side to the seam at the front. What I'm going to do is sew the seams, but I'm not going to sew the front. So I'm going to leave that hole to turn it all inside out. So then again, we've got another fiddly bit, but it's got to be done and it will look so much neater lovely so that was me just going over the seams and then i'm going to come around here i'm just going to double check that i've got the front machine that when I was doing the cutting so that's where I'm also going wrong just going over the other seam making sure that I've got all the bits should just turn inside out and then we can stuff him proper and of course sew the flat cap because that's quite an important part of it <laughs> now always leave yourself a big enough hole because it, it just takes the fun out of it otherwise but um once it starts to go, it should be quite easy. So I'm just pulling the ears out now. There's one face, one eye. There we go. So, and I just need to turn the legs inside out as well. Which shouldn't be too hard because the foot's already inside out. There we go. One. And two. So that's the seam at the back where we left it unsewed for stuffing purposes. Now what I've got here is rice. Um, you need something heavy to hold it, to push it down on the floor. Um, it's got to have some weight in it. Now you can use whatever you like. I recommend using rice and then wrapping it up in gaffer tape. For speed I haven't done that. I've just got it in little balls. And I'm going to put the first ball right down to the foot and then I'm going to put a long bit along the bottom and 
I'm going to use stuffing as well. But off cuts of material would also be good, especially the off cuts of the fleece would be very, very good. Okay, so I can do that off camera, as it were, in a minute. But I do want to do the flat cap because I thought that was very clever. Now what I have here is a strip of tartan fabric and I have folded these bits into three and then I've left this long. So, And I've used as my measure a piece of cardboard cut to a half moon but I am going to use the half moon in the actual construction of the flat cap. So that's that. For the sides, I need um, not quite a teardrop, but I think I need actually a bigger bit than that. So, yeah, because that, that's how big I'd like it to be after sew, but I'd like um, a bit of sewing allowance. So, this is basically cut along a flat and then cut along like that. So, we've got the arc around the side. Okay, I have everything I need. I need to sew this in here and then turn it inside out. this inside out and then I'm going to put that in there. There we go. I want to push it so that it looks like it's supposed to. Now these side bits need to be sewn so the arc swings round like that. Okay. the other one to match up. There we Now what I'm going to do is literally, I'm not going to double sew it or anything, I'm just going to hem this bit of the hat and there's an awful lot to be said for doing this with glue but sort of teasing it round.
and also I need to just do a seam along the back here so that's fine so yes there's an awful lot of thread here and it's not looking too good at all so we have the basic shape of the flat cap that needs to come under there and then we're going to stick that to there we could hand sew that or we can use craft glue and it's just a matter of keeping it on there long enough so that we can tack it onto the top of our head. Not my head, obviously, but the head of our zebra. So I'm going to get all this tidy and stuffed and then we should be one step closer. Okay, so it's just a pause for a moment. So I've... Um, Oh, that's a shame. Mm, no, you can see. So I'm nearly finished. All I've got to do is just tack on the rest of this hat. I did resort to hand sewing uh, most of the seams in on the hat. It was just far too fiddly for me to do on the sewing machine. As you can imagine, it's falling over. And there we are. So our draft excluder made out of scraps of zebra fur and scraps of tartan. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a pleasure to do. Please like, please subscribe, please join us on Facebook and hopefully I'll catch you again. Thank you ever so much for watching.